Lesson 1, Exploring Yoga Classes I'll look for a yoga class nearby. I've heard it's a wonderful way to stay active and relax. That's a great idea, John. Yoga has numerous benefits for the mind and body. Let me know how it goes. Sure, Anna. I'll research the available options and find a class that suits my schedule. It's important to choose a class that aligns with your skill level and preferences. I'll make sure to look for beginner-friendly classes since I'm new to yoga. That's a good starting point, John. Beginner classes often focus on building a solid foundation and introducing basic poses. I'm excited to learn different yoga poses and practice mindfulness through the practice. Yoga can definitely help improve flexibility, strength, and balance, while also promoting relaxation and stress reduction. That sounds perfect, Anna. I could use some stress relief and improve my overall well-being. Absolutely, John. Yoga is known for its calming effects on the mind and its ability to enhance self-awareness. I've heard that yoga also incorporates breathing exercises. It can be beneficial for managing stress and anxiety. Yes, controlled breathing techniques, or pranayama, are an integral part of yoga practice. They help calm the mind and increase focus. That's fascinating, Anna. I'm looking forward to experiencing the physical and mental benefits of yoga. Once you find a class, don't hesitate to ask the instructor any questions you may have. I will, Anna. It's important to have proper guidance and ensure that I'm practicing the poses correctly. Absolutely, John. The instructor can offer modifications and adjustments to help you align your body properly. I'll also make sure to wear comfortable clothing and bring a yoga mat to the class. That's essential, John. Comfortable clothing allows for unrestricted movement, and a mat provides cushioning and support. I'm grateful for your guidance, Anna. Your knowledge and experience with yoga are invaluable. I'm happy to help, John. Yoga has been a part of my life for many years, and I'm glad to share its benefits with you. Thank you, Anna. I'll keep you updated on my progress and let you know how the first class goes. I'm looking forward to hearing about your experience, John. Remember to listen to your body and enjoy the journey. Absolutely, Anna. I'll approach it with an open mind and embrace the positive impact yoga can have on my life. That's the spirit, John. Yoga is not just a physical practice, but also a way to cultivate inner harmony and well-being. I'm excited to embark on this new adventure, Anna. Here's to discovering the wonders of yoga. Cheers, John. May your yoga journey bring you joy, strength, and a deeper connection with yourself. Cheers, Anna. Thank you for your support and encouragement. I'm ready to embrace the transformative power of yoga. Lesson 2, Exploring Fitness Classes
I heard it's a mix of cardio, strength training, and Pilates. It sounds like a well-rounded workout. That's interesting, John. Combining different exercise modalities can provide a comprehensive fitness experience. I'm excited to try it out and challenge myself physically. It seems like a great way to improve my overall fitness. Absolutely, John. Cardio exercises help improve cardiovascular endurance, strength training builds muscle, and Pilates focuses on core strength and flexibility. It's fascinating how this class incorporates different elements to target various aspects of fitness. Variety is key when it comes to fitness, John. It keeps the workouts engaging and prevents boredom. I agree, Anna. It's important to find exercises that we enjoy and that suit our individual preferences. By incorporating cardio, strength training, and Pilates, this class offers a well-rounded approach to fitness. I'm particularly interested in Pilates. I've heard it can improve posture and strengthen the core muscles. That's correct, John. Pilates focuses on developing a strong core, which can enhance stability and support proper alignment. I could definitely benefit from improving my posture and core strength. It's something I've been working on. This class will provide you with the opportunity to target those specific areas and see progress over time. That's exactly what I'm looking for, Anna. I want to challenge myself and see improvements in my fitness level. It's great to set goals and track your progress, John. It keeps you motivated and engaged in your fitness journey. Absolutely, Anna. I'm ready to push myself and discover what my body is capable of. Just remember to listen to your body and work at your own pace. It's important to avoid overexertion or injury. I'll keep that in mind, Anna. Safety and proper form are always a priority when engaging in any physical activity. That's the right mindset, John. Taking care of your body will ensure that you can continue enjoying an active lifestyle. I appreciate your guidance and support, Anna. Your knowledge and fitness is truly valuable. I'm glad I can help, John. Fitness is a passion of mine, and I enjoy sharing information and encouraging others to lead a healthy lifestyle. Thank you, Anna. I'll let you know how the class goes and share my experience with you. I'm looking forward to hearing about it, John. Enjoy the class and embrace the challenge. I will, Anna. Here's to pushing our limits and achieving our fitness goals. Cheers, John. May this fitness class bring you strength, endurance, and a sense of accomplishment. Cheers, Anna. Thank you for your support. Let's strive for greatness and inspire each other on our fitness journeys. Lesson 3, Exploring Remote Work That sounds helpful. I've been thinking about it lately, and I might consider remote work too. That's a great idea, John. Remote work offers flexibility and the opportunity to work from anywhere. 
I like the idea of having a more flexible schedule and the freedom to work from the comfort of my own home. Remote work can definitely provide a better work-life balance and eliminate the daily commute. That would be a huge time saver, Anna. I could use that extra time for personal activities or hobbies. Absolutely, John. Remote work allows you to have more control over your time and prioritize your tasks accordingly. I've heard that remote work also increases productivity since there are fewer distractions and interruptions. That's true, John. Working in a quiet and familiar environment can help you focus and accomplish your tasks more efficiently. I can see how that would be beneficial for concentration and getting work done. Additionally, remote work often promotes a healthier lifestyle. You have more flexibility to incorporate exercise or prepare healthier meals. That's a great point, Anna. It's important to prioritize our health and well-being, even while working. Remote work also allows for better work-life integration. You can attend to personal matters while still being available for work. That's definitely a perk, Anna. It's important to have that balance and not feel overwhelmed by work responsibilities. Remote work can also open up opportunities to collaborate with people from different parts of the world. That's fascinating, Anna. It would be interesting to work with a diverse team and gain different perspectives. Absolutely, John. Remote work provides a global perspective and the chance to broaden your professional network. I'll need to explore remote work options in my field and see if it's a feasible option for me. Researching different remote job opportunities and understanding the requirements will help you make an informed decision. I'll also need to ensure that I have a suitable workspace at home and the necessary equipment for remote work. Setting up a dedicated workspace will help create a productive environment and separate work from personal life. That makes sense, Anna. Having a designated area for work can contribute to focus and productivity. It's also important to maintain good communication with your team and stay connected, despite the physical distance. I'll make sure to utilize communication tools effectively and stay in touch with colleagues and supervisors. That's crucial, John. Clear and timely communication is key to successful remote work collaboration. I appreciate your insights and advice, Anna. Your experience with remote work is valuable. I'm glad I could help, John. Remote work has been a part of my professional journey, and I'm happy to share my knowledge. Thank you, Anna. I'll continue exploring remote work options and see if it aligns with my career goals. I'm excited for you, John. Remote work can bring about new opportunities and a different way of working. Here's to embracing change and considering the possibilities of remote work. Cheers, John. May your exploration of remote work bring you fulfillment, flexibility, and professional growth. Cheers, Anna. Thank you for your support and encouragement. 
Let's embark on this new adventure together. Lesson 4, Forecasting Growth That's great news. I heard that our company's forecast expects steady growth. That's fantastic, John. It's always encouraging to hear about positive projections for the future. Absolutely, Anna. It instills confidence and motivates us to work towards achieving those goals. Do you know what the forecast predicts in terms of the growth rate? I'm not sure about the exact numbers, Anna. But I believe the forecast indicates a consistent and upward trajectory. That's promising, John. It signifies stability and potential opportunities for professional development. I agree, Anna. Steady growth can lead to new projects, increased responsibilities, and even career advancement. It's important for us to stay informed about the forecast and how it may impact our roles within the company. That's true, Anna. Being aware of the forecast allows us to align our efforts with the company's objectives. It also helps us anticipate changes and adapt to new circumstances in a proactive manner. I'm curious to know what factors contribute to the projected growth. It would be interesting to analyze the market trends. Market trends, customer demand, and effective strategies are some of the factors that can influence growth. It's fascinating how various elements come together to shape the future of the company. Absolutely, John. A comprehensive analysis can provide valuable insights and guide decision-making processes. I believe it's crucial for each department to contribute to the overall growth of the company. You're right, John. Collaboration and synergy among different teams are essential for sustainable growth. We can all play a part in driving the company forward and achieving the forecasted growth. That's the spirit, John. Each individual's contribution matters and can make a significant impact. I'm excited to be a part of this journey and contribute to the company's success. Your enthusiasm is contagious, John. It's inspiring to see your dedication and positivity. Thank you, Anna. I believe in the potential of our company and the opportunities that lie ahead. With the projected growth, it's important for us to stay agile and adapt to changes in the market. Absolutely, Anna. We need to embrace innovation and continuously seek ways to improve and evolve. Continuous learning and professional development will also be crucial in this growth process. I couldn't agree more, Anna. We should seize every opportunity to enhance our skills and knowledge. By doing so, we can contribute to the company's growth and our own personal growth simultaneously. It's a win-win situation, Anna. I'm excited to see how our collective efforts will shape the future. Me too, John. Let's stay focused, motivated, and ready to embrace the opportunities that come our way. Here's to the forecasted growth and the exciting journey ahead of us.
Lesson 5. Trying New Habits I can see why cultivating good habits is important for personal growth and success. Absolutely, John. Habits shape our behavior and have a significant impact on our lives. I've been reading about successful people and the habits they attribute to their achievements. That's interesting, John. What are some of the habits that caught your attention? One habit that stood out to me is waking up early and starting the day with intention. I've heard about that too, John. It allows you to have a productive and focused start to the day. Yes, it provides an opportunity for self-care, planning, and setting goals for the day. I'll definitely consider trying that habit myself. It seems like a great way to maximize my time. Another habit I came across is practicing gratitude on a daily basis. Gratitude is powerful, John. It helps shift our focus to what we have and cultivates a positive mindset. Absolutely, Anna. Expressing gratitude can bring more joy and contentment into our lives. I'll make an effort to incorporate gratitude into my daily routine as well. It's a simple but impactful habit. Another habit that caught my attention is reading regularly to expand knowledge and gain new perspectives. Reading is a wonderful habit, John. It broadens our horizons and stimulates our intellectual growth. Yes, it allows us to learn from the experiences and wisdom of others. I'm already an avid reader, but I'll make a conscious effort to read more diverse genres and topics. That's great, Anna. Exploring different subjects will help you develop a well-rounded perspective. Another habit that I've been meaning to try is practicing mindfulness and meditation. Mindfulness is a powerful practice, Anna. It helps us stay present and cultivate a sense of calm. I can see why it would be beneficial, John. It can reduce stress and improve overall well-being. Absolutely, Anna. It's worth giving it a try and seeing how it positively affects our daily lives. I'll definitely consider incorporating mindfulness into my routine. It seems like a helpful habit. Another habit that successful individuals often mention is setting specific goals and working towards them. Goal setting is crucial for progress and growth, John. It gives us direction and a sense of purpose. Yes, having clear goals helps us stay focused and motivated along our journey. I'll make it a point to set meaningful goals and break them down into actionable steps. That's great, Anna. Taking consistent action towards our goals is key to achieving them. I agree, John. It's important to be proactive and take responsibility for our own growth and success. Trying these habits can make a positive difference in our lives. Let's embrace the opportunity for personal development. I'm excited to see how these habits will enhance our well-being and help us reach our full potential. Absolutely, Anna.
Let's support each other in cultivating these habits and creating a positive impact in our lives. Thank you for sharing these insights, John. Let's embark on this journey of self-improvement together. You're welcome, Anna. Let's encourage each other and celebrate our progress along the way. Lesson 6, Seeking Advice Anna, I wanted to ask you for some advice. Can I count on your input? Of course, John. I'm always happy to help. What do you need advice on? I've been contemplating a career change and I'm unsure about the next steps to take. Any suggestions? Sure, John. First, it's important to evaluate your skills, interests, and long-term goals. That makes sense, Anna. I want to ensure that my career aligns with my passions and aspirations. Consider researching different industries and job roles that resonate with your interests. That's a good starting point, Anna. I'll explore various options to gain a better understanding. Networking can also be valuable in gathering insights and connecting with professionals in your desired field. I'll make an effort to expand my professional network and seek guidance from experienced individuals. Additionally, updating your resume and tailoring it to the specific industry can enhance your chances. I'll definitely work on revamping my resume to highlight the relevant skills and experiences. Don't forget about professional development opportunities, such as courses or certifications. Right, Anna. Continuous learning and upskilling are essential in today's evolving job market. Consider reaching out to career counselors or mentors who can provide guidance and support. That's a great idea, Anna. Having someone experienced to bounce ideas off can be invaluable. It's also important to be patient and persistent throughout the process, John. Change takes time. I'll keep that in mind, Anna. It's essential to stay focused and committed to achieving my goals. Lastly, trust your instincts and make decisions that align with your values and aspirations. Thank you for your advice, Anna. I appreciate your insights and guidance. You're welcome, John. Remember, I'm here to support you in your journey towards a fulfilling career. I'm grateful to have you as a friend and mentor, Anna. Your advice means a lot to me. I'm glad I could be of help, John. Let's stay in touch and continue to support each other. Absolutely, Anna. Together, we can navigate through any challenges and achieve our aspirations. Thank you for trusting me with your concerns, John. I believe in your potential and know you'll make the right choices. Your confidence in me is encouraging, Anna. I'll keep you updated on my progress. Lesson 7, Receiving Feedback Good morning, Anna. I have some news to share, and I value your feedback. Good morning, John. I'm glad to hear that. 
I'm here to provide any input or advice you need. I recently completed a project at work, and I'd like to know your thoughts on it. Sure, John. I'd be happy to give you feedback. What specific aspects would you like me to focus on? I'm particularly interested in your opinion on the project's overall effectiveness and presentation. From what I observed, John, your project was well executed and delivered the desired results. That's great to hear, Anna. I put in a lot of effort, so I'm glad it paid off. The presentation was clear, concise, and engaging, making it easy for the audience to understand. I'm relieved that the message was effectively conveyed, Anna. I wanted it to be impactful. Additionally, the visuals and supporting materials you included enhanced the overall presentation. Thank you for pointing that out, Anna. I wanted to ensure the visuals complemented the content. I appreciated the way you addressed potential challenges and provided solutions in your project. It was important to anticipate and address any obstacles, Anna. I'm glad you found it valuable. One area for improvement, John, could be the inclusion of more specific data and metrics. That's a valid point, Anna. Adding concrete data would make the project more convincing. Overall, John, your project was well-researched, organized, and delivered with confidence. I appreciate your feedback, Anna. It reassures me that I'm on the right track. Remember, John, feedback is meant to help us grow and improve. Embrace both positive and constructive feedback. You're right, Anna. I'll take your suggestions into consideration for future projects. That's the spirit, John. Continuous improvement is key to personal and professional development. Thank you once again for your valuable feedback, Anna. It means a lot to me. You're welcome, John. I'm always here to support you and provide feedback whenever you need it. I'm grateful to have you as a trusted friend and advisor, Anna. Your insights are invaluable. Likewise, John. Let's continue to learn and grow together on our individual journeys. Absolutely, Anna. Together, we can achieve great things and become even better versions of ourselves. Lesson 8, Commitment Compromise Anna, I've been thinking about our project timeline. Do you think we could make a longer commitment? That's an interesting idea, John. How about meeting halfway with a three-year commitment? Three years sounds reasonable. It allows us to achieve our goals while maintaining some flexibility. Absolutely, John. Three years provides a solid foundation for long-term planning and growth. It also shows our dedication and commitment to the project, which can inspire confidence in stakeholders. I agree, John. Demonstrating a longer-term commitment can foster trust and credibility. 
However, we should also consider the potential risks and uncertainties that may arise over three years. That's a valid point, John. We can mitigate those risks by regularly reviewing and adapting our strategies. Continuous evaluation and adjustments will ensure that we stay on track despite any unforeseen challenges. It's essential to maintain open lines of communication and address any issues promptly and collaboratively. Agreed, Anna. Regular check-ins and team meetings will help us stay aligned and overcome obstacles together. Additionally, we should establish milestones and key performance indicators to track our progress. Tracking milestones will allow us to celebrate achievements and identify areas that need improvement. Let's also consider the possibility of scaling our commitment beyond three years if the project thrives. That's a great idea, Anna. If the project proves successful, we can explore opportunities for expansion. However, we should remain adaptable and open to changes in the project landscape and market conditions. Flexibility is crucial, Anna. We need to be agile and ready to pivot if circumstances demand it. Absolutely, John. The ability to adapt and embrace change will contribute to our long-term success. So, it's settled then. We'll meet halfway and commit to a three-year timeline for the project. Agreed, John. I'm confident that this commitment will allow us to achieve our goals effectively. Thank you, Anna, for discussing this with me. Your input and collaboration are invaluable. You're welcome, John. I appreciate your willingness to find a compromise and work together towards success. Together, we can navigate the challenges and opportunities that come our way. Let's make it happen. Absolutely, John. I'm excited to embark on this journey with you. Here's to a successful three-year commitment. Cheers to that, Anna. Let's make the most of the time ahead and create something remarkable together. Lesson 9, Food Recommendations Anna, I heard this new Italian restaurant opened downtown. What do you recommend? Their pasta and pizza are amazing. Oh, really? I love Italian cuisine. For pasta, I highly recommend trying their classic spaghetti carbonara. Spaghetti carbonara sounds delicious. What about pizza? Any particular flavor I should try? If you're a fan of meat, their pepperoni pizza is a must-try. It's packed with flavor and perfectly crispy. That sounds fantastic. I can't resist a good pepperoni pizza. Are there any other dishes worth trying? Absolutely, John. Their lasagna is also outstanding. It's rich, cheesy, and layered with mouth-watering flavors. I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. Are there any vegetarian options on their menu? Yes, they have a delicious margarita pizza topped with fresh tomatoes, mozzarella, and basil. It's a vegetarian favorite.
That's great to know. I like having vegetarian options when dining out. Is the restaurant cozy and welcoming? Yes, it has a warm and inviting ambience, perfect for a casual dinner or a gathering with friends. Excellent. I enjoy dining in a comfortable atmosphere. Is it usually busy? Should we make a reservation? It's a popular spot, especially during peak hours. Making a reservation would be a good idea to secure a table. I'll make sure to do that. Thank you for the recommendations, Anna. I'm really excited to try this place. You're welcome, John. I'm sure you'll have a fantastic dining experience. Enjoy your meal. I will, Anna. And if you ever want to join me for some pasta or pizza, let me know. I'd love to, John. Italian food is always a good idea. We can plan a dinner outing soon. Sounds like a plan. I'll reach out to you when I make the reservation. Looking forward to it. Great. I'll mark my calendar. Can't wait to indulge in some mouth-watering pasta and pizza with you. It's a date, Anna. Until then, let's keep exploring new culinary adventures together. Absolutely, John. Life is too short to miss out on good food and good company. Here's to many more food adventures. Cheers to that, Anna. Let's savor every bite and create lasting memories. Lesson 10, Cooking Tips Anna, I'm preparing dinner tonight. I'll be making pasta. Got it. Should I also start boiling the pasta? Yes, please. Boiling the pasta is the first step. Make sure to bring a large pot of water to a rolling boil. All right, I'll get the pot ready and heat up the water. Should I add anything to the water? Yes, remember to add salt to the boiling water. It helps to season the pasta as it cooks. Thanks for the reminder. I'll add a generous pinch of salt to the water. How long should I cook the pasta? Check the package instructions for the recommended cooking time. It usually ranges from 8 to 12 minutes. Got it. I'll keep an eye on the time and test the pasta for doneness. Should it be al dente? Yes, al dente is the ideal texture. It means the pasta is cooked but still has a slight firmness to it. Perfect. I'll make sure not to overcook it. Once the pasta is done, what's the next step? After draining the cooked pasta, you can toss it with your desired sauce or ingredients. Sounds good. I'll prepare the sauce while the pasta cooks. Any recommendations for a simple sauce? A classic tomato sauce with garlic, onions, and herbs is always a good choice. Or you can try a creamy Alfredo sauce. Both options sound delicious. I'll go with the classic tomato sauce tonight. Any specific tips for making it? 
Sauté the garlic and onions in olive oil until they're fragrant and golden. Then add crushed tomatoes and simmer for a while to develop the flavors. Great! I'll follow those steps and let the sauce simmer while the pasta cooks. Should I toss them together? Yes, once the pasta and sauce are ready, drain the pasta and add it to the saucepan. Toss them together gently to coat the pasta evenly. I'll transfer the pasta to the saucepan and mix them together. Any final touches or garnishes? You can sprinkle some grated Parmesan cheese and fresh herbs like basil or parsley on top before serving. Wonderful! I have Parmesan cheese and basil on hand. I'll add them as the finishing touch. Thank you for your guidance, Anna. You're welcome, John. Cooking pasta is a simple yet satisfying meal. I'm sure it'll turn out delicious. I appreciate your confidence. I'll do my best. I'm excited to enjoy a homemade pasta dinner. Enjoy your cooking experience, John. Let me know if you need any further assistance. Bon appetit. Thank you, Anna. I'll keep you updated and will definitely ask if I have any more questions. Here's to a successful pasta night. Lesson 11, Staying Organized. Anna, I've been working on a big project recently and there's so much to do. That sounds like a lot of work. How do you stay organized? I understand, John. Staying organized is key to managing tasks efficiently. I rely on a few strategies. Want to hear them? Absolutely. I could use some tips. Please share your strategies for staying organized. First, I create a to-do list. I jot down all the tasks I need to accomplish and prioritize them based on importance and deadlines. That's a good idea. Having a to-do list helps to visualize the workload. How do you manage your time effectively? Time blocking helps me manage my time. I allocate specific time slots for different tasks or types of work throughout the day. Time blocking sounds effective. It helps to have dedicated time for each task. Do you use any digital tools for organization? Yes, I use productivity apps like Trello or Asana to create digital task boards and track progress. They help me stay on top of things. I've heard of those apps. I should give them a try. Do you have any tips for keeping track of important documents or files? Yes, I organize my digital files into folders with clear labels and use cloud storage services like Google Drive or Dropbox for easy access. That's smart. I often struggle with finding files when I need them. Using cloud storage in folders would make it easier. Any other strategies? Yes, I also use a physical planner to jot down important dates and deadlines. It helps me have a quick overview of my schedule. A physical planner sounds handy, especially for quick reference. I'll consider getting one. How do you handle distractions?
To minimize distractions, I turn off notifications on my phone and computer during focused work periods. It helps me stay focused. That's a good practice. Notifications can be quite distracting. I should implement that. How do you handle unexpected tasks or changes? Flexibility is key. I try to leave some buffer time in my schedule to accommodate unexpected tasks or changes that may arise. Smart thinking. Being flexible allows for better adaptability. I'll make sure to incorporate that into my planning. Thank you, Anna. You're welcome, John. I hope these strategies help you stay organized and manage your workload effectively. I'm confident they will. Your tips are practical and easy to implement. Here's to staying organized and being productive. Cheers to that, John. I wish you success with your project and staying organized. Remember, one step at a time. Thank you, Anna. Your support and advice mean a lot. I'll keep you updated on my progress. Let's conquer this project together. Absolutely, John. I'm here to cheer you on. Good luck, and I look forward to hearing about your achievements. You've got this. Thank you for your confidence, Anna. I'll do my best. Together, we'll make it happen. Lesson 12, Online Security Anna, I've heard some horror stories about online security breaches. It's making me worried. I understand your concern, John. It's important to prioritize online security. Most reputable websites have secure. Encryption protocols in place, right? That's what I've heard. But how can I ensure that a website is secure? Look for the padlock symbol in the address bar and make sure the website's URL starts with HTTPS instead of HTTP. That indicates a secure connection. Ah, I see. So, HTTPS means the connection is encrypted. That's a good tip. Are there any other signs of a secure website? Yes, another sign is a security certificate displayed on the website. It confirms that the website has been verified and is trustworthy. That makes sense. I'll keep an eye out for those signs when browsing. What about creating strong and secure passwords? It's crucial to use strong passwords. Avoid using common words or personal information. Instead, include a mix of upper and lowercase letters, numbers, and symbols. Got it. I'll make sure to create complex passwords from now on. But remembering them all can be challenging. Any suggestions? Using a password manager can help. It securely stores your passwords and allows you to access them with one master password. That sounds convenient. I'll look into using a password manager. What about phishing emails? How can I identify them? Phishing emails often appear legitimate but aim to steal your personal information. Be cautious of emails asking for sensitive data or containing suspicious links. 
I'll be extra careful with emails. If in doubt, I should verify the sender's identity before sharing any personal information, right? Absolutely, John. It's better to double-check the sender's authenticity or contact the company directly to confirm if the email is genuine. Good advice. I'll be more vigilant when it comes to sharing personal information online. How about public Wi-Fi networks? Public Wi-Fi networks can be risky. Avoid accessing sensitive information or making online transactions while connected to an unsecured network. I'll keep that in mind. It's better to use a virtual private network, VPN, when connecting to public Wi-Fi for added security, correct? That's correct, John. A VPN encrypts your internet traffic and helps protect your data when using public networks. Excellent. I'll consider using a VPN for added security. Thank you for these valuable tips, Anna. I feel more prepared now. You're welcome, John. I'm glad I could help. Remember, staying vigilant and informed is key to maintaining online security. Absolutely, Anna. I'll be cautious and apply these tips to protect my online presence. Here's to staying safe in the digital world. Cheers to that, John. Stay safe and secure online. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Knowledge is power. Thank you, Anna. I appreciate your support. I'll reach out if I need further clarification. Let's stay safe together. Lesson 13, Spontaneous Weekend Getaway. Hey, Anna. I was thinking of planning a spontaneous weekend getaway. Any suggestions on where to go? That sounds exciting, John. How about a beach destination? You can relax by the ocean and enjoy some sunshine. That's a great idea. I could use some beach time. Do you have any specific beach destinations in mind? How about a trip to Miami, Florida? It's known for its beautiful beaches, vibrant nightlife, and delicious cuisine. Miami sounds fantastic. I've heard great things about the city. Are there any other beach options we could consider? Another option is San Diego, California. It has stunning beaches, a laid-back atmosphere, and plenty of outdoor activities. San Diego sounds wonderful too. It would be nice to explore the West Coast. What about mountain getaways? Any recommendations? If you prefer mountains, Asheville, North Carolina, is a charming destination with breathtaking views, hiking trails, and cozy cabins. Asheville sounds like a peaceful retreat. I love the idea of being surrounded by nature. Are there any other mountain destinations? Another option is Banff National Park in Canada. It offers stunning landscapes, hiking opportunities, and the chance to see wildlife. Banff National Park sounds incredible. I've always wanted to visit. It would be a memorable adventure. What about city getaways?
For a city getaway, New York City is always a great choice. It has iconic landmarks, world-class museums, and a vibrant atmosphere. New York City is on my bucket list. It's such an iconic city with endless things to do. Any other city recommendations? Chicago is another fantastic city getaway option. It offers stunning architecture, diverse neighborhoods, and a thriving food scene. Chicago sounds like a perfect blend of culture and excitement. I'll definitely consider it. Thank you for these amazing suggestions, Anna. You're welcome, John. I'm glad you liked the suggestions. Remember to check travel restrictions and book accommodations in advance. Absolutely, Anna. I'll make sure to plan accordingly. It's time for some spontaneous adventure. Let's make the most of our weekend getaway. I couldn't agree more, John. Have a fantastic time and don't forget to relax and enjoy every moment. Safe travels. Thank you, Anna. I'll take your advice to heart. I'll share all the exciting details when I return. Here's to an unforgettable weekend. Lesson 14, Medical Tests Anna, I recently had several tests done, and that's reassuring. Can you tell me more about different medical tests? Of course, John. Medical tests play a crucial role in diagnosing and monitoring various health conditions. What specific tests did you have? I had a blood test, an x-ray, and an electrocardiogram. Let's start with the blood test. What information can it provide? A blood test can provide valuable information about your overall health. It can measure things like cholesterol levels, blood sugar, and liver function. That's interesting. I'm glad I had that done. What about an x-ray? How does it help in diagnosing certain conditions? An X-ray is a type of imaging test that uses radiation to create images of the inside of your body. It can help detect fractures, lung infections, and more. I see. It's fascinating how technology allows us to see inside our bodies. And what does an electrocardiogram ECG, involve? An electrocardiogram measures the electrical activity of your heart. It can help detect irregularities in heart rhythm and diagnose conditions like arrhythmias. That's good to know. The heart is such an important organ. Are there any other common medical tests that are worth mentioning? Yes, some other common tests include urine analysis, MRI scans, and CT scans. Each test serves a specific purpose and provides valuable information. Urine analysis sounds interesting. What can it reveal about a person's health? A urine analysis can provide information about kidney function, urinary tract infections, and the presence of certain substances in the body. That's helpful. I didn't realize urine could provide so much information. And what about MRI and CT scans? How do they differ?
MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, and CT, computed tomography, scans both produce detailed images of the body, but they use different technologies. Could you explain the difference between MRI and CT scans in more detail? Certainly, John. MRI uses powerful magnets and radio waves to create detailed images without using radiation. CT scans, on the other hand, use X-rays to generate images. I understand now. It's fascinating how these tests can provide valuable insights into our health. Thank you for explaining, Anna. You're welcome, John. I'm glad I could help. Medical tests are essential tools for healthcare providers to assess and monitor our well being. Absolutely, Anna. It's reassuring to know that these tests can provide valuable information. Here's to maintaining good health and well being. Cheers to that, John. Taking care of our health is vital. If you have any more questions about medical tests, feel free to ask. Thank you, Anna. I appreciate your support. I'll make sure to reach out if I need further clarification. Let's stay healthy and informed. Lesson 15, Upgrading to a Suite Anna, I have a special occasion coming up, and I would love to upgrade to a suite. What are your thoughts on that? That sounds like a wonderful idea, John. Upgrading to a suite can add a touch of luxury and make your special occasion even more memorable. Exactly. I want it to be a truly special experience. How can I go about upgrading to a suite at a hotel? One way is to contact the hotel directly and inquire about suite availability. They can provide you with information on the options and any additional costs. That makes sense. I'll reach out to the hotel and see what they can offer. Are there any other ways to secure a suite upgrade? Another option is to join a hotel loyalty program. Sometimes, members receive perks like complimentary upgrades based on their membership status. Ah, that's interesting. I'll check if the hotel has a loyalty program I can join. Hopefully, it will increase my chances of getting an upgrade. It's worth a try, John. Loyalty programs can often provide additional benefits and privileges during your stay. I'll definitely look into it. Now, in terms of the suite itself, what can I expect compared to a regular room? A suite is typically larger and more spacious than a regular room. It may include a separate living area, a kitchenette, and upgraded amenities. That sounds fantastic. I'd love to have that extra space and comfort. It would make the occasion even more special. Absolutely, John. Suites often offer a more luxurious and comfortable experience, allowing you to relax and enjoy your time to the fullest. That's exactly what I'm aiming for. I want to create a memorable experience for this special occasion. Thank you for your advice, Anna. You're welcome, John. I'm glad I could help. 
I hope you're able to secure a suite and have an amazing time celebrating your special occasion. I appreciate your support, Anna. I'll make sure to share all the details and how it turned out. Here's to a memorable and luxurious experience. Cheers to that, John. I can't wait to hear about it. Enjoy your special occasion and have a fantastic time in your upgraded suite. Thank you, Anna. I'll definitely make the most of it. Your well wishes mean a lot. Let the celebration begin.